So this is a Zama C1Q carburetor, and as you can see, it's just flooding out everywhere. I don't think it's the needle, but we're going to check it anyway for sealing. These carburetors have an accelerator pump, and uh, we're going to dig into that a bit later, but we'll always check the needle for sealing first. They can get a bit of debris under them, but this one's uh, pumped up to 7 psi, and it's holding fine. We'll have to dig a bit deeper and take the metering side of the carb apart. Diaphragm and gasket come off. And what we need to do is have a quick look. Double check that the main nozzle is actuating, and this one it is. Your purge won't work if it's not, so that's not the issue. We have to get the butterfly out of the way now to get to the accelerator pump. This brass screw can be a bit stiff, but uh, yep, pull that one out, pull the butterfly out, give a bit of a press on the shaft, and then pull the circlip out. As you can see, I'm just using a little screwdriver. Take note of where the springs connect and land and sit on the carb. There's one on the shaft and one on the body. And then just gently wiggle that shaft out and your accelerator pumps under my thumb. Well, mine is. Tap that out into your hand. You have a pump, a spring, and a little screen. If you look closely, that little O-ring there is the issue. And it's just worn out and it's uh, just letting fuel come past. It's just seeping out. Now, these are a very unique size, they're tiny, and I've found about two or three, and none of them work. So what I'm going to do for now to test proof of concept is I'm going to block the accelerator pump. And these work fine without, you don't need one. And the way I'm going to do that is I'm going to punch out a little bit of um, gasket material, a circular gasket material. And then I'm going to do the same with a can. Now, the gasket will actually be put in first, and then this piece of tin can will go on top, and that just gives the spring something to press against to even out the pressure that it's going to apply rather than digging into the gasket. So they both go in, as I said, gasket first and then the little tin, piece of tin. Your spring goes back in next and then the plunger without the O-ring. That actually broke off when I tried to take it apart. Slip the shaft back in and reseat the springs, how they came out. Hold the plunger down with a pick and wobble the shaft in, and it will, like that, just pop straight in. Push it across, and slip in the circlip behind it. Make sure they don't go flying. Pinch that one on. And then what we need to do is put the butterfly back in place. Notice the witness mark. That little circle there is a witness mark. We align that up with the little circle on the butterfly. And then you know how it's gone back correctly. And uh, just give it a little bit of a clean. There's a bit of carb cleaner on there and on the screw too, because then the Loctite we're going to apply, because we don't want this going into the engine, is uh, going to work as it should. So pop the brass screw in. Make sure everything's aligned nicely. Gently, gently, it's only brass. Brass into brass, the Loctite will do its job. Make sure that that idle speed screw is all the way out so that you can close that butterfly. If that's not the case, then uh, you might not have it seated properly. So bring that out so that the cam doesn't touch. Flick it a couple of times, and it will just help that butterfly seat. And then from there, you can just snug it up with a screwdriver. All the way down. Double check that it's all how it should be, that it's opening and closing as it should be. I've put the card back together here, and the last thing to do is to uh, put the high-speed screw in. That came out just while I was testing the nozzle check valve, back on the machine now, pumping the purge, and there's nothing leaking anywhere. So that was a good proof of concept, that's where the leak was coming from, and uh, now it's just a case of seeing if it runs.